So this is my husband Phil and I traveling before we had a baby. So happy, so wild, so young, so free. And this is us traveling now with our now two-year-old Dorian. Can you spot the difference? When I look at our travel pictures and videos, i.e. our highlight reel, it actually doesn't look that different traveling before and after having a baby. But I can tell you 100% that traveling solo or traveling as a couple is not the same as traveling once you have kids. This is not to say that it's not worth it or that it's not fun, on the contrary. It's just that it's different and you have to set your expectations beforehand or you're just setting yourself up for disappointment. So in this video, I'm not talking about the differences in terms of all the extra stuff you need, all the extra stuff you need to lug around with you when you're traveling with a baby, which is also true. You do need to pack way more stuff, but I feel like that's pretty obvious. Instead, I want to talk about five other maybe lesser known ways that travel changes once you have a baby. Personally, for me, the last one on this list, number five, is the absolute hardest and most heartbreaking thing. I would love for any advice that you may have on number five. So the first way that travel changes when you have a baby, number one, this is the way that people, people meaning other travelers, airport staff, uh, locals, how other people respond to you. This changes so much when you have a baby. Not necessarily more positively or negatively, again, just differently. Well, sometimes more negatively. This could all very well just be in my head. That's fair enough. But I feel like now when I'm traveling with my son that the world perceives me obviously as a mother and I feel like generally the world tends to be kinder to me in my new role which is a good thing not all the time but usually and I know that not all mothers have the same experience there are a lot of factors here for example I haven't unfortunately always had this positive experience traveling as a mother in my own country in the US. I can make a video on that if you're interested. <laughs> but generally I feel like I'm a lot more approachable now. I feel like people talk to me more in a kinder way when I'm out and about traveling with my son, which is pretty cool. I also feel this new confidence in a way traveling because I feel like a lot of the attention is on my son and not on me. I know that feels a little weird to say, but I feel like people are more interested in my baby or have been more interested in my baby toddler. I don't know what this says about me, but it feels like there's some pressure off of me when I'm traveling um, to just kind of be a secondary character foreigner and my son takes center stage in a lot of our interactions abroad. He also dominates a lot of the conversations. They take center stage and this is kind of cool when you're traveling because you have a walking conversation starter. In Raja Ampat, Indonesia, which is where we were just traveling for the last four or five months, a really long time, I need to catch up on my videos with that, I know. I feel like I had an automatic connection with other moms and other parents, even though I was meeting them for the first time, we speak a different language, we come from a different culture, background. We're all mothers, we're all parents. And I really felt like that was a beautiful thing on a different level to what I've experienced traveling solo or traveling um, as a couple. Kind of a funny thing on identity as a parent in Indonesia too specifically. Um, Indonesians, if you happen to be watching this, correct me if I'm wrong, but where we were in Indonesia, they would call us Mama and Papa Dorian, which is my son's name. So it didn't really matter what my name is. My name's Brittany, didn't matter. Uh, I was Mama Dory in there because you're called Mama and then the name of your first child. Our identity as parents and as a family was center stage much more so there than our individual identity, at least linguistically. A second way that travel is way different with a baby or a toddler is that we cannot anymore, we can no longer bounce around checking things off our bucket list super quickly, all willy-nilly anymore. We have fully embraced what is called slow travel, meaning that you stay in a particular place for a longer period of time and get to know it better. This form of travel is way more conducive to a baby's schedule and if you're able to do that work-wise, go for it. Just going to one place, one city, whatever it may be, one Airbnb, one hotel, and staying there for lot, like longer than a week, maybe up, up to a month or a few months at a time. You can do your normal routine and schedule. You don't have to run around checking all the tourist things off your bucket list. You can just live sort of slowly get to know things, learn a bit of the language, and be in a place just like you would be at home. 
it's kind of the ideal form of travel if you can do it, if you can swing it. We've been really, really lucky to be able to have done this in Turkey, in Spain, in Indonesia, um, in Scotland. We just wouldn't have been able to experience those places the same way if we had gone for a short trip with Dory. The third way that travel is different with a baby is that it is more expensive, but not, probably not in the way that you think. So I used to hear that traveling with a baby is more expensive, and I thought it was because you had to buy them, you know, like an extra ticket for everything, you had to buy extra food, all that kind of stuff, which is kind of true, but like Dory doesn't eat that much to make food so much more expensive for us yet. Uh, for the first year, he's drinking breast milk, you know, like the food was not a big thing. And also flights, he was free for the first two years of his life as a lap infant. A lot of times babies under the age of two or three get into places for free, like museums and things like that. So that wasn't what was making things expensive. What's actually expensive, more expensive, much more expensive when traveling with a baby is that you will pay a premium because you are exhausted. You're not gonna wanna try to save money by staying in a cheap hotel, couch surfing, staying in a shady motel. You are gonna want to pay more to guarantee that you can get a better night's sleep. You'll do the unthinkable as a budget traveler and splurge on fancy taxis over public transportation, at least this is what has been our experience. All of these little comforts really add up when you're traveling with a baby. And um, so that's what makes things more expensive, something I didn't really factor in. The fourth difference, as much as you try to maintain being the center of your own world, traveling with a baby means that your baby is king. Your baby is 100% in charge of your travel decisions and the choices that you make. This doesn't mean I'm not saying that you can't have fun. Obviously, you can have fun, you can do things for yourself, but most of the basis of your decisions is going to be with your baby in mind. This sounds obvious, but I cannot stress this enough to people who don't have a baby or a toddler yet and are traveling. I would look around in Indonesia where we just were and pretty much nobody was traveling with kids. It's mostly couples and single travelers and that means they could do whatever they want, whenever they want, while I was sort of on Dorian's schedule. I mean, I was, not sort of, I was on Dorian's schedule. All of our, the things that Phil and I wanted to do together, um, whether it was diving, like going on a boat trip, whatever, we have to plan that around Dory. If we wanna do something, we have to often split up and do things separately to make sure that somebody is there to watch him. We're always thinking of him, we're always thinking of his happiness. Anything that we plan, we think, is there gonna be something there for Dory to be able to do, to be able to enjoy? And most things you'd be surprised, babies and toddlers are perfectly happy doing with you. Um, I think sometimes travelers avoid doing adult things because they don't think babies or toddlers will have fun and that's sort of a myth. Babies and toddlers are pretty, especially babies, are pretty happy wherever you take them, especially if you get them used to places that aren't normally reserved for babies or toddlers. Get them used to going to museums and behaving themselves in quieter places, whatever. It's not gonna work out perfectly, but you can take them to more places than you think. This is ultimately a beautiful thing to plan things around your toddler. To watch your baby or toddler interact with the world is incredible. This is what makes traveling worth it. But I think a lot of times that Phil and I are sort of jaded travelers. We've been there, done that. But then Dory comes along and interacts with the world like it's, I mean it is, it's all brand new for him. And it's really beautiful to watch him interact with simple things, to watch him interact with new people. And it reminds us that we are alive and we are able to travel and do these amazing things. That's probably the, the very best part of traveling with a baby or small child. And number five, the biggest change when you have a baby and you travel with them is how much more heart-wrenching goodbyes are. Goodbyes, transitions, all the changes that come with travel. It's always hard to say goodbye to people, of course, when you're traveling. Whether you're leaving family that you were just visiting or new friends that you made in, in a place you were traveling to. For example, Dory saying goodbye to his little buddy, this other little toddler that he hung out with every day in Rajampat. I would never have imagined before having a kid how horrible this is, how sad it is to watch your child become attached to people and places, especially people, um, and then to have them say goodbye. And to, he's, you know, he's just been devastated whenever we bring up 
certain people that we've said goodbye to in the days and the weeks afterward. It's horrible. So if you have any advice on that, on how to deal with that, please let me know. Uh, I actually grew up moving around a lot as a child. I remember saying really horrible goodbyes, and so maybe that's why it's affecting me a lot now watching him. I just think, oh my gosh, what my mom had to go through watching us say goodbye to people. Um, it's tough. Everything about travel is different now, but it is so much fun in a different way. It's not relaxing. It's not easy, but it is a million percent worth it and one of the greatest things that we have de decided to do as parents. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know you Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and I will see you in my next video.